everybody. Well, I'm out here on another beautiful, sunny Pacific Northwest day. And I've got some questions about uh, my continuous ridge line and then also how I had my tarp staked out. Um, so I wanted to just do a video response to that just to kind of walk you through my setup and also show you guys some of the upgrades that I've done over the last uh, couple weeks here and there. You know, as I've found five minutes here, five minutes there, I've done a, a few little things. So out here in my, uh, on my DIY hammock, which I'm really loving and I think I'll probably take that to the, uh, the Oregon hang coming up here next weekend. And uh, I've made myself a new rain guard for the bottom because, you know, I figure we're going to have another couple of balmy Oregon days um, full of the wet sunshine that we usually get. And uh, I also did my uh, some snake skins up here. You can see those. So uh, I'm happy about that. I made everything fully adjustable so that it will uh, I can use it on any, any one of my hammocks that I have. So let's go ahead and walk you through uh, some of that so you can see it. And here she is, folks, my DIY, which you guys I'm sure remember from my Hammock 101 sewing videos that I did. This is her and her glory. As you can see, I've got my little shelf staked out. And I went ahead and added a couple of, uh, until I get my bug netting on there, which I will do eventually after I, my busy summer is over. I went ahead and just staked out up to my ridge line to kind of give it some stability and support. Just for now, you know, when, once I get my bug netting on there, then I won't need that. So it's pretty cool. Although I might leave them on. We'll see. You know. We'll have to play with it. The other thing I did, I made my little rain guard here for this coming weekend. So basically I just took a big rectangle. Oh gosh, I don't know how long it was. Probably I'll, I'll measure it out and tell you guys. I went ahead and I sewed. Uh, I just basically just folded over because this, I don't have to worry about any of the weight issues or stuff like that because this is essentially just hanging on the bottom of my hammock. It doesn't have to support my weight so I don't have to worry about, you know, load and all that stuff and, and possible failures. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Are you guys seeing this? We might actually have some sun trying to poke through. Holy moly. It's a miracle. It's a Memorial Day miracle. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, okay, so what I did was I just folded over, like I said, folded over the, the edges on all the seams, which you can see here. Here's the inside so you can see that. I went ahead and double stitched it because, you know, I'm going to be using it outside. Um, I'm using the coated uh, ripstop uh, fabric that I got from, uh, I think I got it from Seattle Fabrics, but you can basically get it anywhere. And then I went ahead and put little tabs on. Um, and this is how, uh, and then I've got my uh, favorite SB mirrors. I love SB mirrors. I gotta tell you, man. They're so awesome. Uh, I'm such a geek. Anyway, uh, so I got my little, uh, I got black espiners so that it'll match my black fabric. Yes. So it's really great because I can, you know, basically put it on and take it off really easily without having to, you know, feed through for my ridge line or feed through for my suspension or anything like that. I can just, if I want to have it on, I can put it on. And if I want to take it off, I can take it off. That's great. Okay. Uh, next thing. Okay, so this line here is actually running the length of, on the side, the whole way, all the way down to the other side. So that's where that one goes. And then I've got a loop, basically, in here on the end. Got It goes all the way around, and then it goes through these little locks, and then it comes up to here. And, like I said, because I wanted to actually have, um, sorry about that, because I wanted to have it be all adjustable for, you know, if I use it on my war bonnet, or if I use it on my bridge, or whatever, um, I put another uh, lock on the end here. So let me show you how that works really quick. Okay. Basically, what I do is, uh, when I'm going to put it on, I've got my little... Sorry, I got my little head beaner, right? And I basically just take it, wrap it around my hammock, secure my little S beaner, and now it's on there. And then what I do is I take the cord, again, it's the loop that's running around, just hook it over. Look at that. Very simple. And if I need to tighten it up a little bit, all I just have to do is just move my little cord lock there. Um, so pretty, pretty, pretty easy. So, like I said, so I've got my little cord lock and I can just slide it up or down depending on how tight or loose I want. Now, because it's an underguard, I want it to be actually fairly loose because um, one of the things is when I'm, when I'm laying in it and I have my underquilt underneath, 
I don't want to be compressing my uh, insulation because that will rob me then of some warmth. So I want the, the rain guard to actually be hanging pretty low and pretty loose and not worry about it compressing uh, any of that fabric. So that's all there is to it. Okay, let's move on to my tarp. As you can see, I have made myself some snakeskins, which I really like. And I basically followed a pattern that I got from uh, Hammock Forms, um, which I liked it a lot. Um, I ended up making a, each each half about uh, 82 inches long, 84, 82, somewhere in there, um, and that gives me, you know, pretty much all I would need for any tarp that I have. This end down here is, uh, I basically, I think I did, uh, it's like five inches from here to here. So folded over, that'd be 10 inches, and then, you know, you allow for your seam allowance, so I think I made it actually 11 inches in total for this end. And then down here, all the way down, this is where they come together. And I went ahead and I used the uh, zip tie idea where you basically feed, uh, you know, chop off the bulky end of a zip tie and then feed it through here. And it's really great because it gives it a little bit of structure, just enough to where it helps me be able to pull it over if I want, you know, if I can just tuck things in. And I really like it. I don't know that it's necessarily necessary, <laughs> but, uh, but it sure makes things a lot easier. So I, I really like that idea. Um, and I went roughly nine to 10 inches here, so folded over. That would be 20 inches. Add your seam allowance of a half an inch, so that'd be 21 inches uh, at the wide end. So, and like I said, I made it about 84 inches long this way. Yeah, so uh, what would I change about it? The only thing I think I would change about it is um, I think instead of doing this end here where I've got, you know, the uh, grow grain and it's pretty long, um, I think for my next one that I make, I'm actually going to curve the end here. Um, just to make it look a little bit more streamlined, not quite so clunky, that sort of thing. But, you know, it turned out great. I love it. It's awesome. So, pretty cool. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and deploy my tarp and show you some other things about my tarp. So up on your first tree, you have your line tied off with a, um, I'm basically just using your normal carabiner here. This is a non-weight bearing carabiner because um, there's not really that much weight on there with the tarp. Although there is some wind, so there is some force there, but uh... Okay, then this is my uh, snake skin, which I'll go ahead and push out of the way. Here's a line coming down. And here's the uh, center line of my tarp. Um, and this is my DIY tarp, which is why it looks so gross. I need to fix the... Uh, Seems the alarm and I get some of that tape to make it look cleaner, but anyway. Um, so I have a, basically just a prusik knot um, that's hooked to an S-beaner that's hooked to my tarp. And that's pretty, you can, uh, you can do anything. You don't need to use an S-beaner. You can actually just have a, a rope, you know, going through here or whatever you want to do. Um, so pretty cool. Some people actually use a shock cord here and it gives them a little bit of a give with the wind and whatnot, but um, I elected not to do that. I just wanted, went ahead and just used a normal cord here. And then basically my ridge line. Uh, I don't know if you can see it okay, but I actually run my ridge line underneath. Now, some people run them over the top. It's really just personal preference. It depends on what you want to do. The reason I run mine underneath is because I camp um, a lot in the uh, in snow in the Sierras. And so I actually like my continuous ridge line underneath because it gives me just a little bit extra, you know, support as far as the snow goes and whatnot. So there it is. So let's go ahead and go down to the other side. I basically have the same setup. I got an S beaner hooked to a prusik here. My line goes up, and then I've got another prusik hooked to a figure nine. This is a small figure nine that I got from uh, Amazon. You can get them anywhere. And then basically, I just have my my line goes wraps around the tree, comes back around. You hook it over this little hooky thing right here. 
wrap it around and then hook it through here where the teeth are and then you want to make sure you tie it off. I don't have it tied off right here just because this is just temporary. I just wanted to show you what I what my setup was because um, I'm not going to actually camp today. Uh, but anyway, so that's that's really it. That's my continuous uh, ridge line in a nutshell. Now, my tie-outs. I had actually gotten this idea off of the hammock forums, which is really cool. Um, and you can see my other video to see how I actually made these. But basically, um, I have my line, which I've just looped through my uh, eye here, runs down. I have a prussic knot here, which um, I've only got it wrapped a couple times, but you could wrap it like three or four times and it'll give you a little bit extra bite there. And basically, the line will slide one way, or it'll slide the other way. It's pretty straightforward. You can slide it one way, or you can slide it the other way, just using your pressic knot there. Okay, so that's pretty cool. And then on one side, I've got just a line with a, 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 a buried uh, loop here, a locked Brummel. Okay, so that's on one side, and then on the other side, I have the same thing. I've got a, a locked Brummel. Okay, but the difference is I've got some shock cord that I've put in here. And that's basically to keep your tarp tight. So when you stake out, you want to stake out so it's in the fully extended position. And then as the night goes on, so you'll be in the, like I said, the, uh, you'll be staked out, you'll be in the fully, fully staked position, you'll be uh, fully extended. And then as the night wears on, your tarp will probably stretch a little bit. That's usually what happens. And so what'll happen is, even though your line will get a little loose, the shock cord will keep everything nice and tight, just like that. So that's how it works. Works really great. Um, and again, I just use this is just your typical Mason's uh, braided Mason's line from Home Depot. Um, I have never had a problem with it failing. Um, I, I've heard you know different mixed reviews. You might try Dynaglide, or you might try some really thin Amsteel, or whatever you want to do if you're worried about uh, you know your wind and the forces and whatnot. But I've had no problem at all with this Mason's line, and I've had it on here for a while. And I've had some pretty serious wind, so uh, it's not been a problem. So anyway, so that's it. So I hope this helps. Um, I'm going to actually go tie another one and show you how I would tie it if I wanted to do a smaller, uh, smaller loops uh, on it instead of these big loops. Let's put the tarp away. <laughs> Well, that's it. I hope it helps uh, helps you guys out to see what setup I have. Um, and I hope you guys like my upgrades. And uh, I'm looking forward to next weekend's trip, the Oregon Hang. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait. And uh, I guess we now return you to your regularly scheduled surfing. Have a good one. Mm. Pop tart. Love the Pop Tarts. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> How are you? So optimistic. Man, I love these. They're so good. Hmm. Made me all happy.